الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تقف ما ليس لك به علم إن السمع والبصر والفؤاد كل أولئك كان عنه مسؤولا ولا تمش في الأرض مرحا إنك لن تخرق الأرض ولن تبلغ الجبال طولا كل ذلك كان سيئه عند ربك مكروها ذلك مما أوحى إليك ربك من الحكمة ولا تجعل مع الله إلها آخر فتلقى في جهنم ملوما مدحورا صدق الله العظيم These are few ayahs of Surah Al-Isra In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have prescribed a way for us that will keep our lives, our heart, pure and clean. And mainly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have advised us to take care of three parts of our body. If we keep these three parts of our body clean and pure, Hopefully the person's life will be clean and pure. In the sam'a wal basara wal fu'at. Hearing, eyesight, and the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this ayah the importance of protecting these three parts of our body. And it says, make sure that you keep your hearing clean don't allow any dirt get into your ears keep your eyesight clean and keep your hearts clean all three of these are related to each other normally we don't pay too much at too much attention to our hearing a lot of time we will hear ourselves and we hear people saying that you know, I'm not going to get involved in it. I'm not going to say anything about it. The person is not going to say anything about it, but he keeps on hearing about it. And we don't consider that hearing to be anything wrong. Amazingly, when we look at these ayahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it started with hearing. In the summer, you're hearing. Number two, well, basar, your eyesight. And number three, your heart. Why started with the hearing, not with the heart? It may seem to us that it's most important that we keep our heart clean, and after that, we concentrate towards our hearing and our our eyes and our tongue. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with the hearing in the sam' wal basar. And the reason for that is very simple if we analyze the senses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with through which we acquire the knowledge. We would realize that most of the false information that get into our hearts and our minds is not through our eyes, it's through our ears. Most of the time when people are making wrong decisions is not because what they have seen, is because what they have heard. Because as far as seeing, 
you have to be there. And we are not present at most of these situations that we normally discuss about and talk about. Yes, we have heard about those situations. And accordingly, this is an organ and this is something that you would find that it's a door to our heart that continuously feeding information into the heart, into the mind. And we don't even know what type of information that is. Most of the time, it's an information, it's a news that is unconfirmed. That is the least we can say about it. Before we go further to say that a lot of time, it's lies, backbiting, accusations, and these type of things. At least, the least we can say is most of the time, the information that we hear about is unconfirmed. People who are reading it to us, they are not really sure about it. If you start questioning the person about it, he will be offended and he will be upset. Don't you trust me? Just like once a person came to Al Hassan al Basri rahmatullahi alayhi and he said to him that a very reliable person told me that you said this about me. A very reliable person told me that you said this about me which was against him really. So he said, the response of Al-Hasan al-Basri rahmatullahi alayhi was, that if this, per this person was really as reliable as you're trying to, to mention about him, if he was so reliable, he would not be backbiting me in front of you. He wouldn't backbite me. And he won't be namam, a person who takes words from one side and go and raise them to the other side just to create differences and hatred between people. Of course, we all worry about the eyes and about the sins that we come we commit through our eyes. And we all know that day and night, as soon as we are out there, these sins will just stand. But amazingly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the sins that we are coming through committing through our ears are worse and they are more than the sins that we commit through our eyes. Normally when we talk about the sins of the ears, you see we may think oh, it's uh, listening to someone cursing or listening to music or these type of things that are, that we normally consider to be haram. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informs us in their hadith that when a person listens to someone backbiting, he is considered to be one of those people who are backbiting. So even if he is not saying it, he is just hearing it. He is one of them. His son is just like the one who is saying it because he is encouraging it. Just imagine if we are in a society here and none of us would listen to the backbiting. So who would dare to backbite now? Where is he going to go to backbite? I don't hear it, you don't hear it. As soon as he starts, you're going to stop him, I'm going to stop him. He wants to talk to me against you, I'll stop him. No, I don't listen to backbiting. He comes to you, talk to you about against me, and then you stop him that I don't listen to backbiting. Let's go in front of him and talk to him. And then we'll talk over there. This is, see the beautiful teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the person who listens to it is just like the one who's backbiting, because he's encouraging him. Through him, that person is able to do this backbiting. Otherwise, if he would stop him, and everyone is of that habit of stopping people when they backbite, there is no one to hear it. So, of course, the people who have that habit of doing it, they will stop too. They have no one that, that will listen to them. In the Sama wal Basara wal Fu'ad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You will be questioned. You will be questioned about your hearing, about your eyes, and about your heart. You will be questioned about all of these things. Each and everything that we hear, we will be questioned about it. When it comes to getting involved our souls, a lot of time we feel, no, I'm, you know, it's out of, it's part of my deen that I don't get into these type of conversations. But we need to protect our ears also. 
This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran al-Karim. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ الَّذِينَ يَخُوضُونَ فِي آيَاتِنَا فَأَعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ حَتَّى يَخُوضُوا فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِهِ If you see people that are just giving, giving their opinions about our ayahs, which means they are just in loose talk, in useless talk, فَأَعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ Stay away from them حَتَّى يَخُوضُوا فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِهِ until they change their conversation. Tell them, I can sit with you if this is the conversation, if this is the topic, if this is what we are going to be talking about, I can sit here. وَإِمَّا يُنْسِيَنَّكَ shaytan. If shaytan makes you forget, Quran, speaking to us. إِمَّا يُنْسِيَنَّكَ shaytan, which happens to us a lot of time. If shaytan makes you forget and we are sitting and we are hearing all of this, فَلَا تَقْعُدْ بَعْدَ الذِّكْرَى مَعَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Once you remember, Never continue sitting with those wrongdoers. Leave it right away. Leave the gathering right away. This is about hearing. The second thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in this ayah is wal basal. Whatever we see, we are going to be questioned about it. How we use our eyes. This great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through which we are able to see everything around us. You know, subhanAllah, if we start counting the blessings we are getting through these eyes, uncounted. But at the same time, when it's misused, when these eyes keep on wandering around at every haram, and they enjoy the haram, they look for haram. If they cannot see, they are trying to find the haram. The enjoyment of our eyes is by seeing the haram, what I ask the eyes are so used to it that they feel that all of this is haram, this is the sweetness, this is the enjoyment. And this is why when a person is sitting in atikaf in the masjid, when a person is spending the time in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after a short time he feels tired, I need to go out. Sometimes the excuse is fresh air. It's really, eyes need some freshness. In our, in our language and according to their understanding. And these eyes are missing something that they are used to seeing. A person is doing the ibadah, sees three, four people sitting at the back of the masjid. And they are chatting, they are talking. He closes the Quran and goes and sits over there. The ears are missing something that they are used to. Our ears are used to hearing these things. And now we are missing them. And you don't find anyone that would do these type of things. So now we will approach someone. What happened in that family? Can you tell me something about it? Oh, I heard that person is having this problem. Do you know anything about it? We like to hear these things. Our eyes are, our, our ears are getting used to it. And they're so used to it that when they don't have it, they miss it just like we miss food. And because of these two things, because of our, uh, our ears and our eyes. And all the filth that goes through these two doors into our heart, the hearts are getting dirty. Mostly, the thing that really fills all the dirt on the heart are these two organs. Our ears and our eyes. They keep on filling dirt into the heart. Of course, those who are not used to controlling their tongue and they have no concern about their heart and about their deen, then of course, they use every organ of their body to spoil their lives and to spoil their iman, to spoil their heart. But we're talking about those who have some worry about their deen, some worry about protecting their iman. They have to the worry about keeping their heart clean. For those of us, we will try to control a lot of other things, but when it comes to our ears and our eyes, a lot of times we pay no attention to it. And this is why, after mentioning these rules, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ذَلِكَ مِمَّا أَوْحَى إِلَيْكَ رَبُّكَ مِنَ الْحِكْمَةِ O Muhammad, this is some of the very special wisdom that Allah has revealed to you. Amazing. That Rabbul Alameen who is Hakim, and each and every letter that comes from Rabbul Alameen is Hikmah. 
But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically says about this order, that this is a very special hikmah. What type of hikmah this would be? ذَلِكَ مِمَّا أَوْحَى إِلَيْكَ رَبُّكَ مِنَ الْحِكْمَةِ This is of the hikmah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a great wisdom if a person can protect his hearing and protect his eyesight from getting involved into the haram. Once these two doors are closed, when we close these two doors from the haram, and no haram gets into the heart through these two senses, then the heart stays staying clean and pure. Then the dirt doesn't get into the heart. Of course, we, have, we talked in the last week about the importance of protecting our tongue. What is tongue? Tongue basically brings out, it spills out what's into the heart. But how did these things get into the heart? Through our ears and through our eyesight. All of this information went into the heart through these two senses and now the tongue is only spilling it out. That shows what this person carries in his heart. So the tongue will come at the end. Although, once a stag getting involved in it, it shows how filthy the heart is and how much cleanliness now this needs and how much work we need to do and mujahada and effort we need to put towards cleaning our heart when we see our tongue stand putting these type of things out. But the sources that gets all of these, these things into the heart, the doors through which all of these haram and this dirt gets into the heart are the ears and the eyes. And in fact, if we look at all the other sins, sins that a human being normally commit, through their hands, through their feet, through their tongue, all of these are because of what's in the person's heart. And normally, the information that is in the heart is through the eyes and through the ear. Most of the major sins, major sins that people get involved in, is because of these two organs. Subhanallah. This is hikmah, this is the hikmah from Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if you want someone to be protected from major sins in his life, then get that person protect his ears and his eyes. When people are getting involved into fights, and these fights are le leading to grudge, jealousy, hatred, and finally, in many situations, when ayahu billah, towards killing people, all of this is because what they have heard about people. That person said this about your father. That person said this about your mother. That person said this about you. It's hearing. And the person keeps on getting fed these type of information and the heart is getting all of this and finally the person cannot control himself and goes out. A lot of time when people commit, there are two major sins. Qatl, if you look at it. Qatl, killing someone or zina wa billah, and zina is related to eyes. A person looks at someone, and then the rest of the things will stand from there on. So eyes and ears are something that if we protect these two organs, if we just close these two doors towards our heart from filling sins into our heart, the heart will stay clean. But of course we cannot close them totally. Because if we close them totally, which means the person is out in the jungle now, he doesn't want to hear anything, his eyes are always closed and he doesn't want to see anything, that's not going to happen. And this is when we need the life of taqwa, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that we use these two organs for things to fill our heart with the right things. Otherwise the heart will stay empty. And we don't want the heart to be empty either. We, don't, we want this heart to be filled of the taqwa of Allah. We want this heart to be filled with the noon of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to use our eyes, our ears in getting the right information in there. Instead of getting dirt in there, we get things that will purify our heart, that will increase our iman, that will increase our noon of iman, that will increase our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that will, will also use, we will need to use these two organs for it. We need to use our hearing and we need to use our eyesight. So these are great nirma, great blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we protect them and use them the right way. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
in many of his ahadith. He taught Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'een how to protect their hearts by protecting their eyes and protecting their ears. Ali radiallahu anhu says, I went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked him for advice. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ali, protect your eyes from getting into haram. So Ali radiallahu anhu was very surprised. Ya Allah, how, Ya Rasulullah, how can I do this? A lot of times, Unintentionally, you would end up seeing something that is haram. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Ya Ali, The first look is for you, which means there is no sin. The second look is against you. There is a long hadith in Sunan ibn Majah, in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us a beautiful example of protecting our senses from allowing the sins getting through it into the heart. It's a very long hadith, but the main part of the hadith that will that is related to our topic, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that the example of this deen is just like a highway. Straight highway that has two walls on both sides of it. On these walls, these walls have some doors in it, and these doors are open. But they have curtains on them. So the walls have doors in it, but there are curtains, and the doors are open, but there are curtains that will protect the person from seeing what's behind there. As soon as the person gets onto the highway, he is given the instruction that is a person standing at the entrance. He tells this person that remember you have to keep on driving straight, don't stop anywhere. And don't look here and there. Make sure you don't look here and there. Then he says you may forget. After this reminder, he says to him you may forget. And therefore, I'm going to have someone sitting with you in your car who will keep on reminding you about it. Whenever you're about to look what's behind these curtains and go out of this highway, that person would remind you not to do that and keep on going straight. So the person starts his journey. And he keeps on going on this highway. Occasionally he hears some sound from here and there, from behind the wall. And he feels this is very interesting. I would like to know what's happening out there. Look now, his ears are involved and he's getting some information, some noise from there. So he would like to go and see what's behind the wall, what's behind the curtain. As soon as he goes that direction and he's about to remove the curtain, the person sitting with him in the car, he reminds him and says, don't you remember that wise? You are not supposed to look there. La taftah. These are the wordings of the hadith. He says to him, Ya Abdullah, la taftah, O servant of Allah, don't remove the curtain. Don't move this curtain. فَإِنَّكَ إِن تَفْتَحْهُ تَلِجْهُ Because if you move the curtain, then for sure you are going to enter there, that side, and you will go into that direction, and then you will lose the track. The point is, the person heard something. Now he would like to get more information about it, and he would like to run that direction. And he feels, let me just find out these things and then I will come back. If he could not control himself without knowing it, without seeing it, how is he going to have control over himself after going over there and seeing everything that's out there? Don't open that curtain. Don't move the curtain. Because once you see it, you won't have no control over yourself. You are not able to control yourself at this time. And you are away from it. And still you are not able to control yourself. Imagine once you open it and you see what's over there. If this person would listen to his advice and he continues and he does not move the curtain, he keeps on going on his way until he gets to the final destination. And if this person would not listen to these advices and he opens the curtain and he sees what's behind the curtain, 
up to now his ears were involved and ears are pulling the eyes from seeing over there. And now he got his eyes involved and he goes and sees over there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, now this person is not going to be able to control himself and he will enter there. He will go to one of these doors. Now he would like to know more of what's happening over there. And as soon as he will step in there, he will become part of it, he will get involved in it, and he will lose Surat al mustaqim This is what happens. We hear something, then we would like to see our souls, and then we get involved in it. Things that we had nothing to do with, but we like to know more and more about it. We heard few things, we like to hear more. And now we would like to go and see. Now we have to be, we want to be over there. And we leave the things that we are supposed to do. The person loses the track and we just get off the track. We were supposed to do this. My time was supposed to be used for this. I'm on my journey now. Whether there is an accident over there or there is fire somewhere, that is not my concern. There are other people who will take care of that. Let those people deal with it. Regardless of how big of a fire that is, if I stop, that's going to prevent me from getting to my destination. At least delay me from getting it there. So why even get delayed? Why waste our time? We have a goal of our life. We need to get there. We need to get our connection with Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to get uh, our heart uh, getting the nur of Iman. And we are wasting our time here and there. Every time we see something, we stop. And then we go and we want to go and we want to know more about it. And now we would like to be standing over there and watching it. And subhanAllah, then a lot of times the person never gets the opportunity of coming back. Coming back where he left from. And even if he would come back, he is far behind others who continued their journey. This is only through our ears and our eyes. And this is why we can now we see. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This is of the hikmah and the wisdom that Allah have revealed to you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that through these ears and eyes, a lot of people, they just stay behind. People lose track totally. And even those who come back, they really stay very far behind, other, behind others who continued and they did not obey their ears and did not obey their eyes. And they continued doing what they were supposed to do. Controlling these feelings and controlling these senses is extremely important. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us tawfiq to do what we are supposed to do with our lives and with our bodies and with each and every na'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has blessed us with. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimina wa al-muslimat wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah.